Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. And today we're gonna to take a look at these things over here, which are the five gigabit ethernet USB 3.1 gen one adapters. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why one of these products, even though it has a 4.1 rating on Amazon and it's gotten over 80% at other sites was actually the lowest rated product that we had on the STH main site in 2020. But this entire segment is way different than I was even expecting when we started this project, because it turns out that all of these actually perform somewhere between say 15 and 30% lower than I would expect. So yeah, we got a lot to talk about today. So Rohit and I had this idea that we would go and get a whole bunch of, you know, two and a half gig ethernet adapters. And we would use those as part of our project tiny mini micro series. Now we used them both for these project tiny mini micro nodes, which are the one liter systems from, you know, Dell, HPE and Lenovo. We could also use them with something like the HPE micro server gen 10 plus that we reviewed and we have a guide on, on YouTube. So there are a whole bunch of devices that don't necessarily have the best networking. And so the thought was, well, why don't we go look at the two and a half gig ethernet adapters and figure out which one is best. And then once we finished the two and a half gig ethernet adapters, we said, well, why don't we go look at the five gigabit ethernet adapters? Because well, why not go get twice as much performance? And it turns out we didn't get twice as much performance. So what we did at the start of this project was, okay, we'll just go buy all the ones that we could on Amazon. So we ended up with a unit from Trednet, one from StarTech, and one from Sabrent. There's also a QNAP unit that we didn't get to test yet. And if you want us to go test it, let us know in the comments. I'm happy to go do it. It's just, you know, by the time we finished three of these, we kind of felt we knew a lot about the market. So I know normally we have a lot of B-roll, but these are fairly simple devices. So we're just going to talk about them using a couple photos. First, we have this unit right here, which is the TrendNet T-U-C-E-T-5-G. It is made mostly out of plastic. There's this little metal bit here. On one end, we have a five gigabit ethernet, so an RJ45, so 5G base T connector. On the other end, we have a USB type C connector. This is a pretty simple device. So that USB type C connector is wired directly into the unit. So it's a stable unit. We also have some perforations for airflow. The second unit we reviewed is this StarTech unit. Its model number is the US5GA30. On this unit, we can see a gratuitous use of plastic, but on one end, we have that RJ45 port that says it's a five gigabit per second port. More on that soon. And then on the other end, we have a USB 3.1 type A connector. So while the TrendNet unit has a type C connector, this has a type A connector. And finally, we have this Sabrent unit. Its model number is NTSS5G. Now right away, you can see that the Sabrent unit is a little bit different than the other units that we've looked at. The vast majority of this is made out of a metal housing. There is a little bit of plastic at the very end, but overall, this is a metal unit. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that while well, on one end, we have the RJ45 port for five gigabit per second NIC. On the other end, we don't have a cable. Instead, what Sabrent has is a USB type C port, and then they supply you with two cables. One is a USB C to USB C, and the other one is a USB C to a type A. So while the TrendNet unit was USB C and the StarTech unit was type A, this basically can be both. So as we started testing these units, what we basically found was that they all performed not at five gigabits per second, even though they say that they're 5G base T or 5 GBE NICs, they would connect and link up at five gigabit per second speed. That is true. What they do not do is transfer data to your host system at five gigabits per second. This actually makes sense, but I want to talk a little bit about our process here first, because I think that's really important. One way that we could test this is just plug it into any old system and say a USB three port is a gen one port could be, you know, from any system who cares, but we didn't just do that because we started seeing some weird things. And so we tested on a whole bunch of different systems. And a couple of those are these project tiny mini micro nodes where we had units from Dell, HP and Lenovo. We also tested not just one generation of these systems. We also use the six, 
7th, 8th, and 9th generation of Intel Core processors. In these systems, we also had Ryzen-based units. We tested this in custom Threadripper systems. We tested it in Epic systems. We tested it in Xeon scalable systems. And we also tested this in a custom Core i9 9900K unit, just because we wanted to see if, you know, a per thread CPU performance was a big limiter. No matter which system we tried, and we tried over a dozen different systems, we didn't get five gigabits per second. Each host was only able to get about 3.4 to 3.5 gigabits per second, absolute max. And this is with every single one of these NICs. It's not just limited to one of them. The reason for that is that these all use an Aquantia chip, and that's the AQC111U. And we're going to flash the block diagram up here, so just so that way you can see what's going on inside the chips that power all of these NICs. Now, at the bottom of this block diagram, you can see that we actually have a 5 gigabit per second NIC, and we have the network link that can be up to 5 gigabits per second. They also do support 2.5 gig speeds and 1 gig speeds, no problem. So if you just want to use it for that, you could, but there are cheaper options if you just want 2.5 gig and 1 gig Ethernet. But what's more interesting is what happens when you get towards the top of this block diagram. When you look at the top of it, you see a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Fi. And the reason that that matters is that no matter what USB 3 port you put this into, you're still limited to Gen 1 speeds. And a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port is only a 5 gigabit per second port. The Gen 2 ports are 10 gigabit per second, but we're limited to 5 gigabits per second here. And why that matters is that if you want to do 5 gigabit per second Ethernet, but then you have to convert that Ethernet to USB, and you have some USB overheads, and you only have a 5 gigabit per second USB link, well, clearly you're going to have some loss. We didn't necessarily know before doing this project just how much loss we would have, and that was one of the goals of doing this entire series. And what we basically found was that all of these NICs, the, when they were working, we basically got somewhere between, on the low end, about 3.19 gigabits per second, all the way up to about 3.5-ish gigabits per second. So you're not necessarily getting five times a one gigabit ethernet speed, you're more or less getting maybe about three and a half times. Practically, what that means is you only get somewhere between maybe 400 to 420 megabytes per second transferring between systems using these NICs. Now, on one hand, you could say, wait a sec, that's not five gigabits per second, what is going on here? That's nowhere near what I was expecting. There are other people though that are gonna look at this and say, well, you know, three and a half gigabits per second, 400 megabytes per second, that's fine. That's way better than a one gig ethernet link. So I'm perfectly okay with that. And it's in fact more than a two and a half gig ethernet link as well. But at this point, that's where the paths of these NICs diverge because we didn't just see the same performance on all of these NICs. And I think I know the reason why. Both the Sabrent and the StarTech units performed just about the same. We saw about 9-ish percent when we were doing our 3.5-ish gigabit per second link. We see something about 9% uh, CPU utilization on an Intel Core i7-8700T. So there definitely was some extra CPU utilization there, but it wasn't necessarily so bad that I would say, hey, we should go back to using one gig Ethernet just to save a couple percent on CPU utilization. I think that for anybody that needs this kind of network performance, that actually is not too bad. Both of these units worked pretty well, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the difference of those later, because those are going to talk, talk really about our recommendations. But what I wanted to talk about first is what we found with this TrendNet unit. So after a little while of doing this series, Rohit sends me a note and says, hey, this thing keeps dropping. What's going on? And I was like, wait a sec. Well, why is this dropping? And so what we started doing was we started looking and trying to troubleshoot why this NIC was dropping in the first place. So we tested on a whole bunch of different systems because our first thought was, well, maybe it's the actual test setup. Maybe it's a USB 3 controller. Maybe that's what's causing our issues. And that well, that didn't fix it. So then the next thing I did was I said, okay, well, let me go buy one. And so I bought we I bought a set of all of these NICs as well, just because I wanted to test them out to make sure that we weren't didn't have like a bad NIC because, well, that would be a bummer if we just had a bad NIC and that's why we were finding an issue. So I bought a second one and I tested it on my systems and I was finding the exact same thing. No system that we put up, we could get this NIC to last for 24 hours. Sometimes it would die quickly and sometimes we would see the NIC basically shut off and it would only take you know a couple minutes. Sometimes it took a couple hours, but this NIC constantly failed. 
So at that point, we said, okay, well, something weird must be going on here. And so what we started doing was looking online and started to look at, well, what could we find on this unit? There's one big difference though that we saw and we should mention before we talk about anything else. And that's the fact that TrendNet, when we plug this unit in, it's not just showing up as a Marvell or a Quantia, Marvell acquired a Quantia. So, you know, it's not just a Marvell NIC. It shows up actually as a TrendNet NIC and it wants you to use the TrendNet drivers. The TrendNet drivers were last updated in their initial release in October, 2019. And that had other impacts as well, not just on the stability. We also, in terms of CPU utilization, you can see that this NIC has a lot higher CPU utilization than we would see at the same speeds as the other NICs that are based on the exact same chip. We would see instead of 9%-ish CPU utilization doing the same transfer, we would get somewhere in the 17% range. That's a huge difference. There's another difference with the driver. Now we double checked on December 31st, 2020, just before we published the review on this, whether there was an updated driver, because it seems like it could be a driver issue. And so we went to the TrendNet website, we downloaded the latest driver, and there are a couple weird things with that. So this is still the 2019 driver. And the other weird thing with it is that it actually gets picked up by Microsoft Smart Screen or Defender Smart Screen, whatever that is, in Windows and says, hey, we protected your PC, do you really want to go install the software? Conversely, when you go and install the standard Marvell Aquantia driver, you get a normal installation process and everything goes through fine and you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. But this adapter actually shows up as a TrendNet adapter that didn't actually take the Aquantia drivers when we used it. So that was a kind of a weird difference. Like TrendNet has their own driver tree for this, but it's not, I guess, as good as the Marvell one. So we had this TrendNet unit that we just could not get stable. So we said, okay, well, let's go look out on the internet and see if we could find anybody else who's had this issue. And it turns out that a lot of people have. If you look on Amazon, there are over 800 reviews and it has over a 4.1 rating, yet there are plenty of people on there that say, oh yes, I have this unit and it's overheating or whatever, and the link keeps dying. There are actually plenty of forum posts on it. I think we're even getting readers that ever since we went and published this review, we've actually gotten a couple of readers that have said, oh yeah, we're having this issue too, or we had this issue as well. So while it could just be the actual units that we have, we have two different units. We've tried them in multiple different systems and we see reports of this online. So it seems like it's a pretty consistent problem. And so what I did was I looked up, okay, well, well, has any professional reviewer looked at this? And so I looked and I saw ZDNet has a little piece on it and they say you can get five gigabit per second speeds, which, well, it links up at five gigabits per second, but you can't actually get five gigabit per second speeds because of the block diagram actually shows us that that would basically be impossible, but that's not mentioned in the ZDNet review. So I don't know what's going on there. There was a more complete review that was done by Tweetown in 2020, where they actually talk about, you know, the fact that this is using the Aquantia NIC. They tore it down and they said, yep, it's the 111U in there. And because of that, we're only getting about three and a half gigabits per second. I think maybe they had 3.6 or whatever it is. Sure. But TweetCount apparently didn't see any of these dropping issues or any of these issues that we're experiencing on multiple units and multiple systems, nor Amazon reviews are starting to see and we're seeing users have. So I guess TweetCount maybe just somehow didn't run into that issue, but they gave it an 85% overall. So at the end of the day, I talked to Rohit and we were like, what are we going to do with this thing? Because, well, clearly something is weird here, but we're using everything public. And you kind of expect that a USB Ethernet adapter, you just plug the thing in and it just works. And this is definitely not the case. It's at least not stable enough to go use on a daily basis. So the reason that this got the lowest rating of 2020 on the STH main site was because it's not stable enough to use and we cannot recommend it after seeing what we saw. We cannot recommend this unit to any of our readers. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is that it's not necessarily the best built and it's also not necessarily the best value. I mean, this is still just a plastic case and it only has USB type C. You didn't get an adapter for type A there. And so that's a relatively simplistic design. On the other hand, it's also $20 more or more than the Sabrent unit that we have that's made out of metal and has both the type A and type C connectors. Oh, and that Sabrent unit also worked. So there's that. Again, if you want to go see the full review and Rohit's full review on that, go check it out. And we're going to have a link in the description along with the reviews for the other units. All right, so let's talk about this StarTech unit. Now, frankly, this thing is about $102. When it first came out, I think it was like $120, $130. So it's come down in price quite a bit. This unit works actually just fine. We didn't really have any issues. It took the latest Aquantia drivers and it performs just kind of how we would expect. It does have only a USB type a port though. And so I kind of don't know if how I feel about this. On one hand, if you look at these units, for example, a lot of these Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes all have USB 3 type A ports. They have plenty of type A ports, but there's usually only maybe about one type C port in any of these nodes. 
And the same thing kind of happens for a lot of other types of workstations that maybe you build or notebooks or whatever. A lot of times you're going to have more type A than type C connectors, although there are definitely some laptops out there that only have type C. So, you know, I don't know, just that's going to be something that you're just going to have to decide that if you like or not. The thing is that this is made out of plastic. And for $102, you kind of expect that this is made out of premium materials. But I guess it's not. It's just made out of plastic. You can literally depress. I can push this thing in and start deforming the case. You probably can't see that on camera. But I'm actually deforming the case by just pushing in with my fingers. The third unit that we're looking at is the Sabrent unit. Now, this Sabrent unit is a $60 option. So it is significantly less expensive than either the $90 TrendNet unit or the $102 StarTech unit. It's made out of metal, which is by far the highest quality feeling unit. Frankly, if I were going to run over any three of these with my car, I would definitely hope that I was running over this one if I wanted it to work afterwards because, well, this thing feels like a tank. Personally, I also like the fact that you have both type A and type C USB connections. The other kind of interesting thing is that this actually comes with a longer cable. So if we connect this in, we can see that this is about how long the cable is, which is, you know, pretty, pretty long. And we're going to hold up the StarTech unit for some kind of comparison. And what you can see is that kind of clearly this is much longer than that. I guess that that kind of begs the question, you know, do you really want a longer cable or are you okay with a shorter cable? I would say that if I were backpacking and I needed something that was a little bit lighter, I actually think the StarTech unit is like I'm holding both of them right now. And I think the StarTech unit is significantly lighter, I think, because of the shorter cable and also being made out of plastic rather than metal. So if I had something where I wasn't really worried about it getting broken, but I just wanted something light to carry, I think that the StarTech unit is actually kind of better. They both use the same Marvell Aquancha drivers. They both work about the same. And so I guess it's just up to our readers whether you'd rather spend $60 on the more robust one or you'd rather spend $102 on the plastic one that's lighter. So when it comes down to a force ranking system on which 5 gigabit Ethernet USB 3 adapter I would get, I would say I would personally get the Sabrent because I'm cheap and $60 for something like this, I think is somewhat reasonable. The $102, if you have basically a less robust chassis than this one and they work about the same, then I, I think that the StarTech one probably doesn't get my recommendation unless you really need that kind of lighter form factor. And the TrendNet one, it worked for some time. And maybe if you're only using it for five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time, maybe it's going to be fine for you. But frankly, just what we saw in this thing, I just can't recommend it. I also just don't like the fact that the drivers have not been updated since 2019 on the TrendNet website. Now, again, we have reviews of all three of these units on the STH main site, so go check them out. I'd love to hear your feedback on which one you think you'd like. And if you have used any of these and you've had either issues or they've worked well for you, well, tell us about it. Tell us about your use case. Tell us about, you know, what how you're using and all that kind of stuff. I think that's really interesting. At the end of the day, though, these things are not 5 gigabit Ethernet adapters. They're really maybe about 3.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters or something like that. And so that's just something to keep in mind. What I don't necessarily necessarily know is whether or not getting a say three and a half gig ethernet adapter for $60 is better than getting the two and a half gig real tech USB three adapters that we see all the time. And we've done a whole bunch of reviews on those as well on the STH main site. Those work great. And those things are typically only in the, you know, 20 to $30 range. And so I don't necessarily know if it's worth twice as much. However, on the other hand, I also think that there are certainly people out there that are going to look at this and say, well, you know what, frankly, just getting that extra one gigabit per second or so is worth spending $30 because, well, it's just $30 and I'd rather just have a faster port. I totally get that use case as well, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Man, guys, we just nerded out on some USB 3 to 5 gigabit Ethernet adapters, huh? Now, as you might imagine, coming up with something like this test plan to go test over a dozen systems with multiple different adapters and even getting more than one of each adapter just to verify that it's not just a one-off issue with a unit, that's actually very time consuming. It costs us a lot of money. So if you do want to support STH, what you can do, you can check out our Teespring shop or you can go buy merch like this. That's kind of how we pay for all this stuff. You can also just give us a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications because that helps us as well. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.